I go back to you on Iran. Yes. The question specifically, and I understand you can't talk about where the monies that have been released have gone okay. uh, and uh, hypotheticals like that. But the Secretary specifically said, Secretary Kerry, I think some of the money will end up in the hands of the IRGC or other entities, some of which are labeled terrorists. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with the Secretary of State? Well, I, he said, he began by saying, I think, uh, and I think that reflects uh, his, I think, rather logical conclusion that a nation that supports terrorism uh, may use some of the money that's coming into the country to further support terrorism. Um, now, the thing that's important for people to recognize is that our critics of this agreement uh, often exaggerate the sanctions, the value of the sanctions relief that uh, Iran will obtain, uh, and they often overlook the rather severe uh, economic um, uh, priorities that are that are um, badly underfunded inside of Iran. There are a number of bills that are already past due that Iran needs to pay. There are significant investments in their infrastructure that uh, also need to be made um, because they're, having, they're already having an impact on their economy. Uh, and I've seen at least one economic na analysis that indicates that, uh, that Iran is not going to immediately bring all of the available money uh, into the country because it would have the effect of uh, uh, artificially appreciating their currency which would, uh, you know, further, um, you know, weaken uh, their economy. So I, I guess that is why, you know, we have been pretty honest about the fact that this agreement is not going to resolve all of our concerns with Iran's bad behavior. Uh, and it is entirely likely, and I think it's even expected, that Iran will continue uh, to support terrorism. But because of Iran's intention, that we assess to continue support terrorism, that's what makes it so important that we prevent them from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Uh, and look, that's not just a case that we've made. This is also the case that uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu himself has made. He himself made it a priority, I think for very good reason, to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Uh, and the President uh, concluded that the best way to do that is through a diplomatic agreement like the one that we've recently implemented. Uh, and you know, that is, uh, that's what's motivating uh, uh, you know, this action, uh, and it is why th the implementation of this agreement uh, was one that we celebrated, uh, because it did represent uh, substantial steps that Iran had to take to scale back significantly their nuclear program and to cooperate with the kinds of international inspections that will verify that they're not developing a nuclear weapon. And those are kinds, that is access, uh, and that is a, a change in their nuclear program uh, that could not be achieved through military action. To, to be clear, what you're saying is while some may conclude, and it would be logical to conclude, that some monies may flow to groups labeled terrorists, you think you can mitigate the threat. But you do say it could flow there. Uh, well, I, I, I acknowledge we've been candid about that possibility. Uh, and uh, that, that assessment is drawn from Iran's longstanding support for terrorism. Uh, and again, that long-standing support for terrorism is what motivated us to prevent them from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Uh, and um, it's also what motivates us, in part, to ramp up our efforts to provide additional support to uh, our closest ally in the region, Israel, uh, and to uh, seek to uh, better integrate the defense and security capabilities of our Gulf partners as well.